we are headed to major facility, a, a source, a city source of heat, a steam power plant, apparently just a door away from here in our Vancouver office. They are powered by natural gas, but they say they mm -hmm. want to go electric. Yeah, that's right, Leanne. I got to check out this little facility that has a big carbon footprint and hear about their plans to go much, much greener. Take a listen. I'm here in downtown Vancouver beside our very own steam power plant. That's right, your hot water this morning may have come to you via this building and it's about to go through a major green overhaul. Let's check it out. For decades, this power plant has been quietly supplying heat to over 215 customers, including St. Paul's Hospital, commercial and residential buildings in the downtown core. Even the clock in Gastown? Yes. That makes sense. It gets steam from us as well. Yeah. <laughs> We're here to find out what this means for our city's carbon footprint, now and into the future. The Creative Energy Steam Plant is one of North America's largest district energy systems. The idea is that cities have one big centralized boiler that then carries that heat through a network of pipes, efficiently heating buildings using less energy than if each building had their own boiler. The concept has been around for centuries, dating back to the Romans, and 15 kilometers of pipeline has been heating downtown Vancouver customers since the 60s. This is like right out of, you know, like a 1960s power plant. These are old pneumatic controls. Basically, they've been abandoned, and we've now obviously upgraded to a computer base. This was a state of the art back then. So this is Command Central, basically. Exactly, yes. So the old pneumatic controls, that's only for one, one or two boilers. The other five boilers are basically controlled from, it's called our Delta V system. The six boilers in Vancouver generate steam at high pressure and high temperature. Pipes then carry that to heat radiators, underfloor heating, and domestic hot water. Your hot shower in the morning. This has been incredibly efficient for high density regions like Vancouver for years. Efficient, but not necessarily green. That's the main fuel that comes into the plant. This yellow pipe? Yes, that's all natural gas. That's our main source of fuel. Creative Energy's natural gas-powered boilers are the single largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Vancouver. That's why there are major plans to convert to a lower carbon fuel, and most importantly, have electric boilers do most of the work. Completely renovating this plant, basically building a brand new plant. We are adding phased manner electric boilers and drawing power from BC Hydro's uh, substation here in Murin substation. First, the old boilers will be replaced with high efficient boilers. This means no heat escapes and is wasted, but it's still a process that relies on fossil fuel. The ultimate goal is to go electric with only the natural gas boilers as backup. And the full rollout will be by 2028, 2029. So when we complete the whole thing, roughly 60 to 70% of the operations will be completely decarbonized. This kind of eliminates about 60 to 70,000 tons of carbon from downtown Vancouver. That would be a massive reduction to the current carbon footprint of the downtown core. Creative Energy currently has this proposal before the BC Utilities Commission and has similar plans for Horseshoe Bay, Toronto and Seattle. Johanna Wagstaff, CBC News, Vancouver. What a cool story, Joe. I had no idea that it, right behind us here at the CBC was a Neither steam did power I. plant. Yep. Yeah, I walk by it all the time. Costco <laughs> run. It's Same. the big blue building. Okay, so That's the one. <laughs> yeah, so Joe, is this idea of central heating and cooling what, what the future of cities should look like? This is what we wanted to know. So we spoke to an energy expert from UBC who said this concept of central heating a densely packed city like Vancouver is the right way to go. It's highly underutilized in Canada. Uh, it's used way more in Europe and in cities and other parts of the world. But he also said that the reasons for electrifying have to be the right one. Take a listen. Oftentimes what we're seeing is these new innovative systems, new renewable energy systems coming online. What they're doing is they are being brought in to meet the future demand as we grow population, as we grow our energy systems uh, um, and, and people's demands, they're not replacing the old fossil fuel system. So the plan is to eventually replace those fossil fuel boilers uh, in downtown Vancouver. 
and then go fully electric. But he went on to say that as we electrify our power sources around the world, we really need to think about what that looks like for future generations. Here in BC, our electricity is already hydro, so we've kind of taken care of the back end when it comes to green energy. But what does that look like for land use? How much more land do we need if everything goes electric? And what does that mean for our waterways? So some big questions, but ultimately he said this is a very efficient way to heat and cool cities in the future. So we'll stay tuned. Okay, lots to think about. Thank you so much for that, Joe. You're welcome. And this is a part of our ongoing series, The Climate Changers, brought to you by Johanna Wagstaff. The Climate Changers is our new series, sharing the stories of people who are taking positive steps, big and small, to tackle climate change every day across communities across BC.